生まれ故郷であるスウェーデンからノーベル化学賞を受けたことは長い人生の中でもことのほか嬉しい出来事だったようです。
uh, transuranium elements, I'd be uh, famous for discovering the medical isotopes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> In case of uh, uh, iodine-131, yeah. uh, that was still uh, that is still being used. I iodine or iodine. Uh, in Japanese, we call it yoso. Uh, yes. Uh, that is... Uh, oh, uh, iodine 131 yeah. is still used. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and also, well, that saved your mother's life. Yeah, actually, iodine 131 saved my mother's life. It's used in the diagnosis and the treatment of uh, thyroid disorder, uh, hyperthyroidism, and she was suffering from that. And uh, she was uh, very ill. And the, the same disease killed your aunt or your mother's sister. Uh, yes, and the, the same hyperthyroidism had led to the death of my mother's sister. And um, she had a doctor who had uh, taken some undergraduate research with, work with me at Berkeley. Oh, really? And he knew about this. Yes. And he sent her to a doctor in Hollywood uh, who was just beginning to use iodine-131. And uh, he diagnosed her as having this thyroid condition and then, and then uh, treated her, cured her, and she lived to a ripe old age, into her 80s. You've been dealing with atoms and elements and uh, nuclear things for so long. I, I, I think my... Uh, uh, aim, uh, my objective is uh, just to increase knowledge and uh, if I can increase knowledge about the atom and the, uh, the uh, nucleus, uh, that's about as fundamental as you can uh, get. Now let me go into the day when you received the notice from uh, Swedish Nobel Prize uh, <coughs> Committee that uh, you would be the, the winner of uh, uh, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Had you expected that? Yes, I had expected it because uh, actually Arne Desalius, who was on the Nobel Committee, had lunch, uh, had dinner here right in the room next door with us in September of 1951 and uh, visiting uh, Berkeley and Lafayette. And as he was leaving, he said to Helen, my wife, well, we'll see you in Stockholm soon. And uh, Helen said, well, we don't have any plans to go to Stockholm. And he said, you may be going there sooner than you think. So uh, uh, that was a hint. I see. Uh, and well, as uh, well, everybody knows that the uh, Nobel Prize is a fine product of Sweden. And you are a Swedish-American here. Yes. Uh, it must have given you a kind of a special thought. Oh, oh absolutely. Uh, actually, my mother had told me about the Nobel Prize uh, proudly when, when I was a little boy. I'd, I didn't ever think that I would be a winner of the prize. But then uh, when uh, the news came, of course, I was especially proud because I was Swedish. さまざまな加速器や研究設備が立ち並ぶカリフォルニア大学バークレー校のキャンパスです。1971年、アメリカ原子力委員会委員長の任期を経てこのキャンパスに戻ったシーボーグ博士に、10年後再びワシントンへの出動要請が届きました。学校教育の質の低下、まとりわけ算数や理科の基礎学力の低下が問題になる中で。時のレーガン政権がシーボーグ博士らアメリカの有識者に学校教育改革の道筋を示すよう求めたのです1年半に及ぶ検討の中でシーボーグ博士は改めて教育問題の重要性を痛感し特に若い世代や子どもたちに自然科学から人文科学さらに芸術に至るまで幅広い知識と関心を持たせることに情熱を傾けるようになりましたバークレーの丘の上にサイクロトロンの発明者であるローレンス博士を記念する科学館を作って子どもたちに物理学や科学の基礎知識を与えたりまたカリフォルニア州周辺の大学や集会を回って自分の体験を講演してみたりと博士は85歳になった今も精力的に活動を続けています。
この日シーボーグ博士はサンフランシスコ近郊にある短大を訪れ講演を行いました長い研究生活や原子力委員会に在任していた頃のエピソードをユーモアを交えて語ります Had been named after the planet Uranus, named Uranium. Macmillan and Abelson decided to name the next element with the atomic number 93, Neptunium, after the planet Neptune. And so fortunately, there was another, there's another planet, Pluto. So we decided to name the element with the atomic number 94, Plutonium. Now, We probably should have used the base Plut and named it Plutium. But we like Plutonium better. So we gave it the name Plutonium. Don't you like that better? I think that's a better sounding name. <laughs> and we obviously should have given it the symbol PL, <laughs> but we like PU better. <laughs> so so we, gave it the, we gave it the symbol PU. And、uh, we thought that we would be subject to、uh, criticism when this was published after the war. And、uh, now I'm going to on to another aspect, and I'll run through this pretty quickly. And that is my service with 10 presidents of the United States. And I was visiting the radiation laboratory when the phone. Rang in January, January 10th of 1961, and it was President elect Kennedy. And he said, Dr. Seaborg, I want to talk to you, come to Washington, and be chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. Well,、um, I said, Oh my gosh, how long do I have to make up my mind?、And、he said, Take your time. You don't have to let me know till tomorrow morning. <laughs> I, here, I was asked to stay on by President Johnson.、Um, this was one of the,、uh, as chairman of the AEC. I remember one afternoon I was called to the White House. President Johnson wanted me there. He didn't have any particular de- exact agenda. He just wanted to talk to me. He spent the whole afternoon with him, just sort of chewing the fat.、Uh, presidents get lonesome sometimes, and he liked me, so he wanted to spend an afternoon with me. <laughs> Dick Nixon. I also <clears throat> was、uh, well acquainted with Gerald Ford. I knew、uh, Jimmy Carter, of course, he was a nuclear engineer. I served on the National Commission on Excellence in Education, appointed by President Ronald Reagan. And that brings me to the end of my talk. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Dr. Seaborg, it's been a great honor having you here today. And I was wondering, after all your experience with so many presidents, are you a Republican or a Democrat? <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. I've, I've served five Republican presidents and five Democratic、uh, presidents. And、um, I, I don't think I should be quoted on this, but I'm, I'm not too thrilled by either party now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you、oh, very、okay. much, Dr. Seaborg. It's been a、mm-hmm. wonderful experience for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right.